Today we have invited all the candidates and uh, Mr. Albrecht couldn't make it. So the format is going to be this. Dear, can you wave the yellow flag? Thank you. Timer, hold up the timer. Thank you. And red flag man, hold it up. Thank you. So those people are very powerful. They <laughs> control the candidates. The yellow flag means you have 10 seconds left. When the red flag goes up, that's it. Can we hear from Mr. Ryan Costa? Come on in for Mr. Uh, Harold Albrecht. That's the big question, because I went to a hockey camp, the Americans go rock, paper, scissors, shoot. Yeah. That's the American way. I, I grew up in the States, so that's right. That is the American way. No. Are you comfortable with that? Well, I, wanted, I went in Rome, right? So let's do Canada. So it's always been rock, paper, and then go. Right. Well, rock, paper, paper, scissors, rock, okay. paper, okay. scissors. Okay. So, Mr. Youngman and Mr. Hunt, can you go first, please? Here we go. Watch. Rock. Yeah. Oh. Okay. <laughs> so can you go there, please? You are first place. Can you go over there? Oh. Oh. Yeah. Okay. So you want to you go there? Okay. Thank you very much. So now, what's going to happen if you just sit in that order? One, two, three, four. We're tying into curriculum with dance and speaking. So the orange party, please come out. Raha, chew quick. <laughs> Don't choke Raha. <laughs> Raha means peace in Arabic. I learned that from Raha. Also means full mouth right now. <laughs> okay. Are you ready, Raha? So, Mr. Goldo, you have two minutes for your opening statement. Timer, tell him when he's ready, say his time in, and then he goes. 150 yellow, then two minutes. Say, tell him when he's ready. Do the boss. Okay, I'm going. I did pick up on the uh, orange wave right in the beginning. I'm not sure if anybody else caught that with the, with the kids doing that. I'd like to thank everybody from WD Townsend for inviting me out tonight. Uh, it's a pleasure to come out always and speak with engagement children, uh, especially with the parents also. Uh, I hope to have an engaging conversation tonight. Uh, we'll give the students some information about ourselves, about what we want to do for Canada. Uh, I'm a certified sheet metal worker. I was born and raised in Kitchener. I've lived in the riding for 17 years, so I can actually see the school from my backyard. I served in a, as an officer of my local union for 16 years. So I'm in my second term as their president. I also serve as a trustee on the Health and Welfare and Extra Trust Fund. Uh, election after election, my members have put their faith in me to be their voice when it comes to issues affecting them, from benefits to bargaining. I have listened to them at their homes, discussing their current and future needs. Tom Mulcair also and the NDP have a plan to bring 200,000 seniors out of poverty by increasing the annual pension plan and the guaranteed income supplement benefits. Our NDP plan will protect income splitting for Canadians collecting a pension. The NDP will also be investing in the economy by lowering taxes for small businesses from 11 to 9 percent over two years. We'll be investing in medium-sized businesses with an innovation tax credit. Uh, these companies, when they decide to build plants or buy new equipment that create jobs, 
you'll get a tax credit for doing so. We also support $15 a day quality daycare, a million seats, or a million spaces. This will allow more parents who want to join the workforce to do so. It's proven that Quebec system works. Every dollar invested in quality affordable daycare gives a return to the economy of up to $2. Uh, I'm going to skip over the Trans-Pacific trans Partnership. Uh, it's a little bit too much for the younger kids. Uh, I do stand strong with Tom, the NDP. I stand strong for you, the residents of Kitchener, Conestoga. It's time for Canada. Oh, uh, I ran out already. You got to yell at stop. Okay, I'll stop. <laughs> My fault that we've got all these things going on. Grace was going was to introduce our orange candidate, so Grace, go ahead. I'm sorry. My Do we have to start over again then? <laughs> <laughs> Grace, you go. My name is Grace, and I'll be introducing Mr. Villano, who was born and raised in Kitchener, Ontario. He's the local candidate for the NDB party. He volunteers for the Dutch Boy Drummond Bugle Corp as a driver. He is married, has three children, and has six grandchildren. James is committed to creating and protecting quality and local jobs. And here is Mr. Bowen. <laughs> Thing. But since I've been going out and talking to people, I found out that the thing that's probably most important to people is the amount of poverty that exists in Waterloo Region and in Canada as a whole. So I've actually found that the policies for the Green Party are, are very compassionate policies. Compassionate policies in that you want to look after the seniors, the national senior strategy. You want to look after uh, homeless people with a national housing strategy. You want to look after everybody with a, a pharmacare program so that people no longer have to uh, pay exorbitant prices for drugs. But overall, I found that all of these issues aren't probably going to be addressed unless the voting system is changed. You'll find that, that on the table here today, we've got three candidates, well, four candidates, including Mr. Costa. And 
there is probably not that much difference in the actual specifics of the platforms that we're going to discuss. We all pretty much agree that they're in this to help Canadian citizens live better lives. And so there's, there's some specific things here and there. The sad thing is that when you cast your ballot on Monday, you can only vote for one of us. And I should be the lucky person who gets elected as a member of Parliament. Anyone who voted for Mr. Lewis or Mr. Costa or Mr. Villeneuve will not have the representation in Parliament that they voted for. So when I get to Ottawa, I will still work to change the voting system to achieve a proportional representation so that even if you vote for a candidate who is not elected, you will still have representation in Parliament. Thank you. for the Progressive Conservative Party. Before politics, Albert owned a private dental practice in Kitchener for 27 years. He stopped dentistry in 1999. Instead, he became a pastor to a community church in Dune area of Kitchener. Harold Albert pastored the church until 2005 when he was announced to absent his church and was to seek the Progressive to the Progressive Conservative Party. He, was, he won the nomination, but on that day, his wife died. Albert has a new wife and, his three ch and has three children. Today, Harold Albert is not here today. Thank you for listening. guys for the invitation. If, uh, if we had this debate before the Rogers TV one, we would have asked if you guys would have been on television. Next time we'll see if we can have that happen before. I am Tim Lewis, your local liberal candidate, and it is an honor to be here tonight. Actually, this is my second night. I was here last night for your uh, ribbon cutting ceremony at the uh, Natural Playground, but they wouldn't let us play tonight because of the rain, so I'm very happy to be here tonight. Um, I live very close to here, just around the corner with my wife and two children. My daughter is in West Heights right now. She was in French Immersion, now in West Heights. And my son goes to Forest Heights. He was in French Immersion and they both went to Driftwood. So this is, this is pretty much my neighborhood. Really happy to be here tonight. Looking forward to talking to you and answering questions. You guys have put a lot of effort into it and it's fantastic. Part of the liberal platform is a platform of being inclusive. That means including everybody instead of dividing everybody. Government should be about bringing people together. Even if we disagree, sometimes we have different ideas, we all need to cooperate. And that's very important to the Liberal Party. So we're hoping to have a good conversation tonight. Of course, we'll be willing to ask any answer, any questions you have, and hope we can learn as much from you as uh, you're learning from us. So looking forward to this. Thank you. Thank 
very much. Um, at this point, are there, we are going to ask a question. Each candidate will ask a general question. Each candidate gets one minute to respond to the question. You can address it to one person that people can respond um, if they wish to pass. That's, that's fine. Are there any students that wanted to ask a question? Solian, please come up. Quick leader. Um, hi. Um, were you scared when you found out you were going to be a local Canadian? Was I scared? I was scared when I found out. No, you know what? It's a good question. You're saying, how did we feel? How did I feel when I decided to be a candidate? Well, no one asked me to be a candidate. Uh, instead, I searched out how to be a candidate. As a musician, you wouldn't think necessarily, wow, how's a musician getting into politics? Why I got into it was because I was frustrated with the government. So I made the decision to find out how you need to run. Really, I found out you have to be 18 years old and you have to be a Canadian citizen. And I am both. So I looked into it and I applied and I did the application and I was excited when they said you, you basically passed the test. They did an interview and letters of reference. So I wasn't really scared. I was more excited. And I figured, how am I going to figure this out? And the more I work at it, the more I learn. So I, I think excited is the right word to be again. That's a great question. Thank you, Sonia. Are you making questions? Brian, do you want to sit back and do you want to speak up for the Okay. Let's hear from Ryan and fill in for Mr. Alder. Mr. Costa has good stage presence. But I was, I was actually asked to uh, run for the Green Party. I've, I've been um, thinking green ideas for a very long time. So uh, the ideas, of the, the principles, the platform of the Green Party uh, wasn't unusual to me. So I was very pleased to be asked, excited like Mr. Lewis, um, and the more that I learn about the Green Party platform, um, the happier I am to be running for the Green Party because they seem to have all the very same ideas that I have about how to represent you in Parliament to Ottawa. So I wasn't scared, I was excited, and very, very happy to be asked. The question was, was I scared? I, I ran provincially last year. Uh, I kind of walked into it. I did the application process and handed in all of my paperwork and became a candidate. It was, they had two candidates at the time. Uh, I was selected to represent Kitchener Conestoga. Uh, then it was a little bit scary. Uh, this time, uh, because of my showing as a candidate in the provincial election, uh, I took 20% of the vote. I had 10,000 votes. Uh, the Riding Association approached me and they asked me if I would be the candidate for the federal election. Uh, I had no worries about it. I have a, we have a strong team. Uh, they take care of me. They make sure that I, I'm where I'm supposed to be, when I'm supposed to be there. Uh, I've been taking care of my members for, for 16 years on the, on the union side. And no, I'm running out of time. <laughs> I'm ready to take on a larger group, that being the people of Kitchener Conestoga, being their strong voice in Ottawa. Thank you. We'll have one more student question. That was from a girl. So how about a question from a boy, from another gender in our, in our Mr. Mar? Um, how do you feel about helping Syrian refugees come to Canada? Well, maybe we'll start with Mr. Hillman at this time. We go across, so that's it. <laughs> Thank you. A question has come across the debate table many, many times. Uh, Tom Mulcair has assured Canadians that elected on October 19th, by the end of the year, we will take in 10,000 Syrian refugees, and we'll take in another 9,000 every year after that, while we're governing. Also, the important thing is we will give them credential recognition. I spoke to a couple of students earlier about this. What this means is if they practice as a doctor, a dentist, a nurse in their home country and they come to Canada right now, Canada doesn't recognize that. NDP is going to change that. They're going to make sure that when they leave their country as a doctor, dentist, or nurse, they're going to be welcome to Canada and they'll be able to get a good paying job and support the families being exactly what they were doing 
in their country, a doctor, a dentist, a nurse, or whatever trade they were doing. Canada used to be well known as a compassionate country, a country that looked out for people in other countries. Um, we've taken in refugees before. Uh, there was a, a huge crisis in Vietnam many, many years ago, and Canada took in many, many refugees. The current government has promised to take in 10,000 refugees over four years, and yet we found in the news recently there's actually been an order from the Prime Minister's office to stop refugee claims from, from being processed. I think that's shameful. I think Canada can do much better than that. Um, Elizabeth May has proposed that, that we can take in uh, possibly as many as 25,000 refugees this year, right now. I myself think we can probably take in about 40,000 refugees. And I've heard it said that Romeo Dallaire, uh, one of the uh, generals for Canada's armed forces, has said we can easily take in 50,000 refugees. Now that's going to put a strain on our social systems, but I think Canada is up to the task and we'll make those accommodations that need to be made to get refugees coming into Canada. Well, the Liberal Party has said it is very important to, to bring in refugees, bring in people to Canada. Canada, as we just mentioned, has always been very inviting. And one of the big platforms for the Liberal Party is we would like to make sure that we bring in what we call family reunification. There are people that are coming over by themselves and then want to go and get their families to come back to come over with them. We want to make that a priority. I just spoke to a gentleman yesterday at the door who's having a really difficult time. He's trying to bring his mother over from Syria and it's taken years and he's frustrated. He misses his family. He wants his mom to come over and that's a big part of the platform. We want family reunification. As far as numbers, we've also mentioned the number of 25,000 refugees. We can bring them over safely, we can do it securely, and we can do it humanely. And we want them to have what we call a pathway to citizenship. Not just come over to work, but to come over to be eventually a Canadian citizen. Um, a, a good tie-in with that is uh, tonight the coffee has been, has been donated by Starbucks. There's a lot of coffee there, so I'm hoping you can drink it. I think it's caffeinated. However, you'll be fine. Um, so please drink it up. And the children have uh, kindly baked themselves with adult supervision treats for dessert. And the money raised for a donation, the Goodwill, a Goodwill donation, is going towards the MCC, which is a Mennonite Central Committee. And we're hoping to have representative come from the MCC to accept our big, big fake check at 8:27 p.m. So I'm hoping he'll show up, and and uh, some people will present the check to uh, the MCC representative. Next thing is uh, now if the children have asked a question. They've had a chance to talk to the candidates beforehand. Now it's open to the adults who are going to be making the decisions uh, on Monday. And so I'm hoping my students, when they turn 18, they will vote. That's part of the reason why I did this, but this is an opportunity now for adults to ask questions of the candidates. So, would anybody like to start off? Don't be shy. Adults, Costa. Okay. Are there any adult questions? Here we go. Alexis, this is your job. I'm just job here. <laughs> infrastructure spending that we're going to do, uh, one-third of that spending that we're talking about. One-third is public transit, one-third is social infrastructure, which is affordable housing, seniors, homes, child care. The third component of that is for environmental, uh, for environmental infrastructure. We need to strengthen our environmental infrastructure, we need to invest in green technology, and we all make sure that we're going to go to Paris for the uh, Climate Change Convention, and that we're going to go together with if elected, if we're fortunate enough to be elected, 
to take the premiers of, of each of the provinces and territories, bring them all over as a united front so Canada can get its place back in the world as far as acknowledging our environmental uh, concerns. The Green Party is, of course, known for its environmental issues and, and, and dealing with those environmental issues. It started back in, in 1970 sometime in Germany um, as, in opposition to the nuclear programs that they had there. But today the biggest issue on the planet is global climate change. And that's caused largely by the emission of greenhouse gases. And those come from fossil fuel extraction. But I learned this week that the total fossil fuel industry, all the oil resource extraction that's taking place in Canada, is maybe 2% of a gross domestic product. Uh, that's not an economic driver, that's a, an afterthought. And it is very easy, or not, not easy perhaps, but it is very feasible to convert all the industry that's going out to pulling fossil fuels out of the ground today and changing that industry to producing renewable resources. So creating windmills, creating low head dams, um, and, and creating industry and technology that preserves the environment rather than uh, destroys it. So we, um, there's a, a big plan that the Green Party has. <laughs> this is an important topic. It seems to be an important topic with a lot of the children as well because it's their future. Uh, Tom was an environment minister in Quebec. Uh, every year that he was there, they lowered the emissions uh, coming out of Quebec. We're going to eliminate the Conservatives' billion dollar subsidies to the fossil fuel industries. We're going to implement a cap and trade system that actually puts a tax on carbon. So the large polluters, if they want to pollute, they're going to pay and the, Canadian, the Canadians are going to benefit through that. Uh, the money's going to be used for infrastructure, uh, better buses, better roadways. Uh, we're going to reduce Canadians' reliance on fossil fuels as well. We're going to support energy efficiency and, and conservation. Uh, we'll restore Canada's international reputation on the environment. Uh, only, uh, Tom, only Tom will care. Now, apparently the Liberals have said it as well, but uh, he had first said that they were going to commit to going to Paris in December, to Kyoto, and getting back to the table on environmental and climate change with the world. What is your plan uh, regarding uh, solving these uh, teachers' uh, union issues currently going on over in Europe? And uh, do you have any, I mean, any plans, uh, normal kids' activities and extracurricular activities got spoiled because of these issues? Mm, what's your thought on that? I believe your question was issues with the teachers and the, the, the strikes and things like that. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, that is a provincial issue. Uh, I don't think that the federal government will get involved in it. One of, the, one of the problems that are coming out of this, that are arising, are the teachers have not walked out on the students. That's the important thing to remember. They have, they have that option and they won't take it. They, they want to stay there for the students. But the Liberal government doesn't want to cooperate with them. They want to claw back on their benefits. They want to claw back on uh, their sick days. They want to make their work days more difficult by making it so that they don't have prep time like they're supposed to have. Uh, they want to get rid of some of the part-time positions that the, that the fill-in teachers do and have prep time used from other teachers to fill in class time during this thing. Uh, I, I sat with the Waterloo Regional Labor Council yesterday and there was about a 45 minute discussion with respect to that. But federally, there's nothing that we can do. As Mr. Billen has said, um, education is a provincial jurisdiction. The Green Party has a plan to create a council of Canadian governments that would include not just the provinces sitting at the, state, at the table, but also municipal governments, Aboriginal governments, Inuit and Métis governments. Um, and that's a way to get the issues that citizens have back to all the different governments. Um, and I, I see no reason why 
as working cooperatively between the citizens and the different governments that these issues can't be resolved. And as Mr. Villa have said, it's a credit to the teachers and the support staff that they have stayed in their position without a labor contract and, and continue to, uh, to provide services to the kids. So I think that's important. I think it could be improved on. Yes, it was mentioned that it is a provincial issue, so there's not much we can do, but it does bring up the point that, that one of the platforms for the labor party is that cooperation and making sure that the children come first. My son, it was a few years ago when he was in grade seven, they had they, he lost the whole year of extracurricular and he still talks about it, no dances, no sports, and, and that's a bit of a sour taste in him. So ultimately everyone needs to think about our children first. And that next generation. So that's 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 going to be most important for governments at different levels to cooperate, and also the parties to cooperate, and making sure we're putting people first and putting the politics aside. Um, I have a question for all of you. Um, what's on your agenda about the economy? As you know, for a while our economy. Uh, it's not that the greatest, and uh, our dollar is low on the gas prices. So, what's on the agenda uh, first when we uh, win the election? That's one of the major platforms for the Liberal Party is to, is to get the economy started. We're now in our uh, I think it's the second recession they're referring to. This is the Harper recession because we're the only G7 country that's back into recession. So we need to stimulate the economy. The Liberal Party is the only party that is saying we're going to make the investments now, not in years from now. We're saying we're going to be willing to make those investments into infrastructure and putting the spending we need. We have low interest rates, we have people out of work, and we have crumbling infrastructure. So now is the time to do all those repairs and get people work. The other way to stimulate the economy is with our middle class tax cut. Right now we're going to tax the wealthiest 1% and we're going to reduce taxes for the middle class. The middle class is where, is where basically we're going to grow the economy. Those are the small businesses. Uh, we're going to reduce small business taxes from 11 to 9%. And we just want to get people working and get the economy kick started. As Mr. Lewis said, that um, the economy is not doing well under the current government. Um, part of that, or, or what one of the um, things that the current government is proud of is the low taxes that, that they have put across the board. And I think they're promising lower taxes even yet. Yet it hasn't stopped industry from leaving Canada, from actually leaving Waterloo Region. There's, uh, Mr. Villeneuve has a whole list of organizations, companies that have left the region. And that's why the economy is doing badly. It hasn't been helped by low taxes. So in addition to lowering the uh, tax rate for small businesses from 11 to 9 percent, similar to what the uh, Liberal Party wants to do, you want to put corporate tax rates back to where they were before so that there is revenue in the government coffers to be able to uh, deal with social programs. The most important thing for the economy that will affect you is the guaranteed livable income that the Green Party wants to implement, which is a minimum income, a survival income, which gives enough money for you to buy food, to get shelter, and then to be able to stay in school longer, to be able to look for the work that you've actually been trained for. <laughs> As I mentioned in my opening statement, we're going to reduce the small business taxes from 11 to 9 percent. We have an innovation tax credit for medium-sized businesses where they invest in their business. Uh, Canada will invest in them with tax credits uh, in order them, for them to employ more people. Uh, we're going to create innovation. The innovation tax credit is also going to be. I missed that. I go back a page. Uh, we also have a plan for a, uh, apprenticeships. Uh, bringing them forward to uh, the system. I'm a tradesman by uh, sheet metal worker by trade. Uh, there were no incentives for me. I just went ahead and did it. Uh, they'll get tax credits as they go through the system. Uh, we'll make sure that the uh, small businesses with their tax credits that enables them to reinvest in them as well. We're also going to be investing in our farmers. Uh, they are also small business owners, something that nobody really looks at. Uh, we're going to make sure that we continue to grow Canada. Uh, we're going to keep it strong and we're going to make sure that we're taking care of Canadian business people. Stop! Gotcha. Ah. <laughs> uh,
uh, on one day, October 19, if your party and you get elected to govern the country as a local MP of what region of Waterloo, what will be your top priority to improve the quality of life in our region? That's a great question. They're saying on October 19th, if elected, what's your priority locally and what's the first thing you're going to do? The Liberal Party, I believe, the first thing I said is we're going to reduce those taxes on the middle class and help families. Uh, that's and, and enact our uh, family, uh, Canada family benefit plan. But on a, lo on a local level, what I'd like to do is I've met with the mayors already and uh, all of them, the Kitchener and the three townships, and they are all talking about crumbling infrastructure. So we want to make sure that this region, this riding, gets its share. Even though we've been very, very fiscally responsible and balancing the books, we want to make sure we get our share of that infrastructure money because there's crumbling bridges and roads and uh, sewers are very, very important on the list. So that plus affordable housing are the two, two things locally that I want to start working on right away. As I said, the thing that I've found when talking to people is that poverty reduction, poverty elimination is the most important thing. So that would certainly be the, the first thing that I would want to, to achieve while in office. Um, I'll probably end up working with a, a number of the local organizations that exist to, uh, to reduce poverty. The uh, Waterloo Coalition for Poverty Relief, for example. Um, other organizations. Uh, there, are, there are many of them all working together that want to eliminate poverty. So by implementing some of the green plans, like the Guaranteed Capable Income, uh, that would be one way to achieve that. I think one way to achieve that in the long term is to ensure that these issues that you may have, you get the representation of Parliament. So I will also be working on the portion of the representation issue. Um, but poverty relief is, is probably the one issue that I find uh, the most urgent right now. Good answer. Short answer. Again, it all seems to circulate around about investment in infrastructure, uh, affordable housing, uh, the arts are in there as well, there's a lot of arts in the, in the region. Uh, unfortunately, we aren't, we aren't focused only on Waterloo region, or the Kitchener section of it. Uh, there's, there's 39 small towns that we also have to take care of. Uh, one cent more from the gas taxes is going to be transferred uh, to the fund when the region puts in for funding for a project, they have far too much paperwork that has to be filled in. We're going to reduce the amount of red tape that it takes for the region, for Wilmot Township, uh, for Wellesley, for Woolwich, in order to get their funding. Uh, Les, the mayor of Wilmot, had mentioned that far too much red tape. We're going to make sure that the money is there for the, for the region year after year. They'll know how much they have. They won't have to ask for it. It'll be there for their use. <laughs> so what is your plan for Bill C-51 when you get elected on October 9th? I know it got currently or recently passed with the current government. Um, how do you ensure freedom of rights? while ensuring security of Canada. I'm sorry, could you just explain C-51 so everybody knows first, we won't count against your time. Okay. As, as best you know, some, some people might not know what C-51 is. So you got 20 seconds for that. For that. Okay. <laughs> uh, Bill C-51 was supposed to be anti-terrorist legislation that was brought forward by the Conservative government. Uh, it was heavily debated over whether it was good or not. Uh, it was bad legislation. Uh, the higher courts said that it was bad legislation. Previous premiers said it was bad legislation. Previous judges said it was bad legislation. Uh, Harper gave it on to uh, his senators and he forced them to vote on it and accept it and there were no changes made to it. Just the breakdown of it is, if there's a pipeline going up and somebody protests this pipeline that's going up, they can actually be arrested and considered terrorists. That's the short of it, right? Okay. Thank you. So you have your minute, please. Uh, when C-51 came forward, when they had the third vote in Parliament, NDP did not vote for C-51. We voted against it. We were the only party that didn't support it. 
Tom stands firm on this. I stand firm on it. We are not going to accept it. We are going to repeal Bill C-51, and it will no longer be a piece of Canadian legislation. The answer is pretty much the same. Repeal that act. It's now the Anti-Terrorism Act. It's already passed the, the bill stage. It's been enacted into law. In addition to what Mr. Villeneuve had to say about the, uh, the issues that the law uh, has, it also allows um, people to be arrested on the suspicion of some wrongdoing, uh, of the association with other people. I'm a computer consultant by trade. I teach people about cryptography and how to secure your email against spying. Well, terrorist groups use that too, so it could very well be the case that I'm going to be accused of aiding terrorists by teaching them how to encrypt their email. So this bill isn't just against terrorists, it's actually against ordinary citizens. Uh, police will have powers to, uh, to arrest, people will have powers to spy on you through the internet and, and through other cameras and, and whatever else exists. It's a really, really bad law. All of the things that you guys have described, all of those scary, scary things that you're hearing, they need to be fixed. They absolutely need to be fixed. What's missing is civilian oversight. There is no civilian oversight. What is missing is a sunset clause, which means in a couple of years, this, has, this, this bill will just go away unless it is renewed, because it doesn't need to be renewed if there are no more threats. So what the Liberal Party has proposed are amendments to fix all of the things that are scaring people, all the things that make people feel like their, their freedoms are at stake. What the bill does have is it does have some measures that bring security up to the 21st century. It, it, better, it makes a better no-fly list for, for people, and it has cooperation among the security organizations. But we have proposed amendments that the, one of the early things that we'll do are propose those amendments and fix that bill and make sure it doesn't have any of those, those scary tactics in it. Gotcha. is uh, about the Canadian healthcare system and uh, as we all know we uh, are very privileged to have the healthcare system that we have in this country and it's admired by many other countries. Over the last 10 years under the Conservative government the transfer payments from the federal government to the provinces is basically starving the provincial health ministries and making it more difficult to provide the services that we're used to uh, provincially. Is there any plan by your parties to increase the transfer payments from the federal government to the provincial government of health care dollars. Short answer, yes. Um, the uh, Green Party has a plan for, um, with this Council of Canadian Governments, uh, to renegotiate the health accord to ensure that the transfer money that go to the provinces today are actually used for health care. Ontario has um, a, a pot of funds. They no longer have individual budgets for uh, health care or infrastructure or um, um, other issues that, that education that they do. There's one large pot. So money that gets allocated for health care doesn't necessarily get spent on health care and that needs to be fixed. In addition, the Green Party has a national pharmacare program to reduce the cost of drugs to a price that's affordable to everybody. Um, and um, just having, having the uh, guaranteed livable income as well will ensure that Canadians no longer have to choose between buying drugs for, uh, for pain relief or putting food on the table. So, yes. Okay. Over the past 10 years, uh, transfers to the provinces for health care have been going down further and further. The cuts, the cuts are unreal. Uh, more cuts are promised. Uh, NDP does not want to put any more cuts through. They want to raise the, the uh, transfers to the provinces. They want to make sure that there's money there for long-term care, for the home health care, uh, enabling seniors to stay at home longer uh, rather than having to give up their homes uh, with nurse care workers in the homes uh, to help them maintain dignity through the rest of their lives. Uh, it's important also to keep in mind that Tommy Douglas, uh, he was NDP, pioneered public health in Canada. Uh, if you want to take it to a further level of how bad the cuts have been, 
Uh, most of us are old enough to know. When I was a kid, the hospitals never asked for donations to buy a piece of equipment. The money was provided for them from the federal government. No longer. Now it's, a, it's a, just a hidden tax that you donate. I won't, be, I won't need the full minute. It's a fantastic question, and we are absolutely all in agreement. The Liberal Party also. You, the, in the question was the answer. The, the cuts to the transfer payments, that's, that's what's missing. The federal government not cooperating with the provinces. So by saying we're going to get the money moving, get it to the provinces, they know exactly what they need to spend the money on, they just don't have the money. So that will help reduce wait times, and we've also said we're going to um, do exactly what you said, buying, buying drugs in bulk actually lower the cost of prescription medicine because right now that is a, a, a terrible cost to the system and it's a cost to families. So I guess if we all three of us are in agreement here, we can save some time and just say yes, we will, uh, we will invest more in healthcare. Uh, do you have any plans to make post-secondary education more affordable for Canadians? Very proud to see that we do. Uh, Mr. Justin Trudeau was just at Wilfrid Laurier about two weeks ago when we released our platform. Right now, what's happening is these kids are going into universities, uh, colleges, and trade schools, coming out with crushing debt and soaring unemployment for, for youth or underemployment, which is even worse because that doesn't show up on the stats. So, what we're going to do is increase loans and grants and get those people money right away, get those students the money right away. They don't need tax cuts down the road, they need the money right away so they can, they can stay in school. We're going to invest in trade schools, and also one of the things I'm very proud of is when students are coming out, they have this crushing student debt and they're not getting jobs. We're going to make sure that until they have a job that pays $25,000, they do not have to pay their student loan back. That will give them the breathing room to start a career. Something the Green Party wants to do immediately is to uh, stop the practice of giving interest-bearing loans to students. So uh, student loans would be capped at $10,000 and there would be a set payback so that the interest no longer accrues and gets, gets larger and larger if you're having trouble paying off your debt. So the, uh, the loans would be capped at $10,000 immediately long term by uh, 2020. We want to eliminate post-secondary tuition altogether. It's been done in many other countries, all the Scandinavian countries, Sweden, Norway, Finland, um, Denmark. It's been done in Ireland, it's done in Germany. Uh, the Netherlands has free universities. Free post-secondary education should be a human right. And so the Green Party wants to eliminate tuition completely by 2020. Another, it's, it, it, we keep on going in a circle, it's cuts. Federal cuts, federal cuts, federal cuts. Going on and on and on. And what the students need is not more funding. They don't need more debt. What the students need are relief from what they're paying for their tuitions. If there are fewer cuts, more money put towards the universities, more money federally put towards the colleges uh, and the trades, these students won't have to pay as much as they do to get the education that they want. We're going to bring forward a plan to take care of the students, to make sure that they can't afford school, they won't leave with massive debt, 50 cent ATM fees, and a 5% above prime rate credit card. Um, so my question is, if there was one government policy uh, that you could change or reverse right now, what would that be? Well, uh, well on a special on a personal level, uh, Bill C-24, which if you're not familiar with that, basically lets, becomes a two-tier Canadian citizen. It allows the government to strip Canadian citizenship away from anyone who has citizenship in another country as well. Um, it creates two tiers, it makes two, two classes of citizens, 
and there is no reason we should have that. That would be one of the other things I would make sure of. The Liberal Party has said right away, there's no reason to have it. Uh, Canadian is a Canadian. What, I'm naturalized Canadian. I was not born in this country. And to think that someone can strip my citizenship away without a judge, uh, just the Minister of Immigration can just say that, that's something that is just un-Canadian, undemocratic, and I would make sure that it does not stay. There are so many things to choose from to, that needs to be undone by the next government that, that comes in. Um, of them all, I think I'm going to go back to my initial thought and, and see about changing the electoral system because that means that you will have the representation in the government so that what the people vote for will actually be enacted by the House of Commons, by the members of Parliament. Today, you have the choice, well, on Monday, you have the choice of choosing one of the five of us, and only one of us will be able to, to represent you. If we could, each one of us, represent you all together, we wouldn't be having a different party, we wouldn't be having these discussions. So, my first thing that I would probably undo or redo is how the electoral system works, by having proportional representation, so that each of you will have representation in Parliament. I spoke about this earlier, uh, you've done a little bit of uh, a lower level for the kids so that they can understand it as well. Uh, it has to deal with credential recognition. Uh, when refugees come into Canada, their credentials are not recognized. They need to be able to come into the country and to work in the field that they were working in, in the country that they came for. If we're going to welcome them, why are we only welcoming them, welcoming them halfway? Let's meet them all the way. Let's let them come into our country. Be the nurses and doctors, dentists, whatever specialists they were in their countries, be in our country. How can you expect a refugee to come into our country and start off at a minimum paying job when they have the education and the training and the skill to do a job that would give them a job that pays $50,000 a year, $60,000 a year? They can come into Canada and they can start off on the right foot. NDP wants to make sure that they can. That's what it's about. Canada. Canadians. Thank you, Lexus. Let's give a hand for Lexus for doing such a good job of the microphone. question is for all the three candidates, what has motivated you to try to become the next member of parliament in Ottawa? I started, I started getting into this in my opening statement. I've been doing it for my members for 16 years. I'm in a second, a second term as their president. They voted me in time after time after time because I've spoken up to them, I've backed them. I was their voice at meetings. They relay their issues to me, I take them to the table. I negotiate for them, it's the contractors that we work for. I make sure that they're taken care of. I think one of the things that has happened to the current government is the people have lost their voice. Bill C-51 is a fine example. Nobody wanted it, but they pushed it through. If elected, I'm your voice. I have to listen to you. If you don't like something and you tell me, I have to take the time. And I'll stand strong for you. I'll maintain my integrity and make sure that Tom knows, look it, Kitchener Conestoga doesn't like that. We're not going to vote for it. Like the colleagues up here with me, I'm dissatisfied with the way the government is running. And, and the best way to fix something people keep telling me is to do something about it yourself. So I was very pleased to be asked to run for the Green Party, and I'm certainly going to do my best to, uh, to fulfill uh, their mandate to represent you in Parliament because in the long run it's it's what you need to have done. It's not what the, what the government comes down and tells you needs to be done. You need to tell the government what needs to be done and the channel for doing that is to elect a member of Parliament who will best represent you. So to get the Parliament, to get the representation that I want to see, I think the best way to do that is to actually run and be a representative and have that happen for everybody. 
I guess if I had to think about it, what, what inspired me to get involved in politics is, uh, is Mr. Harper, but not, not this Mr. Harper, the, the other Mr. Harper. Uh, if you were to ask me, hey, it's been, it's been, it's, uh, if you were to ask me a few years ago, I probably would not have thought I would get involved. But I moved to Canada 20 years ago, and it was on the Cretchen years, it was a liberal government, and I absolutely fell in love with this country. It was the way the government governed by listening, it was the way the government represented everyone, and, and everyone had a voice, and even uh, on the world stage, we were respected, and even Canada's military at the time, we were peacekeepers. And so I watched that erode under the other Mr. Harper, and it became more and more frustrating to the point that I decided to do something about it. And so that's when I decided to run. And, and basically, I'm saying this to everyone out here, you can be from any walk of life, and you can get involved in politics. Right now, uh, we have NAFTA, which is an agreement between the U.S., Canada, and Mexico. Think of TPP as that only larger. It would actually replace NAFTA. It involves 12 countries, including uh, the, the Asian and Pacific Rim. Um, the short answer is the conservatives have negotiated in complete secrecy. So we don't know who the winners and who the losers are. We don't know if it's going to help us get our products exported to other countries fairly, or if it's going to allow other countries to come in and undercut our products. Until we get the details, and they were supposed to release the details this week, strangely they said they won't be out until after the election. So we can't really trust the Harper government to know if it's a good or a bad deal. All I can say is that the Liberal Party said if we have the honor to be elected, we would sit down and talk with all of the parties and make sure it's a good deal before we decide if we want to sign it. We just don't know. TPP is another one of these things that needs to be undone by, by the next government. Uh, in fact, the, the treaty was signed while there was an election going on. The first thing that happens in an election is that uh, the Governor General dissolves Parliament. There are no longer members of Parliament. There's no longer a governing party. There's a, a maintenance government, a caretaker government that is not supposed to enact any new legislation, is not supposed to sign treaties, and yet that happened anyway. So, TPP needs to be undone. It supposedly opens up uh, all these uh, Pacific countries to trade with Canada. But in Canada, we've had something called uh, supply chain management, where we've actually been able to have stable prices for things like uh, dairy and eggs and things like that. I know how much my egg is going to cost tomorrow. With the TPP, where we've got other countries trying to sell us their eggs, not only do I not know how much the egg is going to cost, I don't know how their chickens have been fed, um, and I don't know whether or not those eggs are going to be available tomorrow. So TPP is just bad trade for Canada. I saw that. It's, a very, it's a very hot topic. Uh, the deal has been signed, but it hasn't been approved by the governing bodies. Uh, it has to be approved by, by the next government before it's a true deal. I know the U.S. doesn't like it. Uh, if, if it's such a good deal, we've already lost 40,000 good manufacturing jobs in the kitchen area alone, Schneider's. But uh, the list goes on. Uh, Lear is about to close, Firestone Tire Plant. Uh, these are a result of, of trade deals with other countries. And this is what it does. Uh, the big farmers, the big, the big farmers, uh, the, big, the, the big milk producers aren't afraid of it. But the ones, the small rural ones that we have around here, they're afraid of it. 
because they cut back, and you mentioned the supply management, they cut it back 3.2%. If it's such a good deal, why, the, why did they all of a sudden say that they're going to uh, subsidize $4.3 billion to the farmers, $1 billion to manufacturing? They'll have to adjust. They'll adjust by laying people off. They'll adjust by moving jobs south of the border. Sorry, it's a hot topic. <laughs> about the American dollar. I suppose what you mean is, is how will we uh, ensure that the Canadian dollar isn't worth only 75 cents uh, in, in American currency. One of the things is to shore up the existing economy within Canada and that means generally small businesses to, uh, to be profitable within Canada. So programs that the, the Green Party and the other parties will have uh, as well will ensure that small businesses are profitable. And that means that U.S. companies using U.S. dollars will come to Canada to buy Canadian products. That's a level of trade that's actually useful to Canada, unlike some of these big trade agreements that we were just talking about with the TPP. So by having a, a good economic growth, by having good businesses available, uh, we'll be able to, uh, to bring the Canadian dollar back up to parity. Parity. That's a, that's a big word. <laughs> Equal. Uh, the, one of the reasons why this has actually happened is because the Conservative government has put so much of our money into oil. But that affects, that affects our economy. And when there are things like that, that that are so heavily invested in that go that low in price, it, it affects our economy. Uh, the word that we like to use is diversify. Instead of spending a lot of money on investing in oil, you invest in things like the Green Party was talking about. You invest in small business and medium-sized business. You encourage business to come back into Canada instead of going south of the border. I'm going to get some agreement here. Uh, it is about diversifying our economy, it's about strengthening our economy, and it's also about working with the United States. One of the things the Conservatives have trouble doing is working with uh, the provinces and the territories. They also have trouble talking to the United States. They don't have an open dialogue. So we're going to make sure we have an open dialogue with the United States. They're our biggest trading partner. They're our neighbors. We need to work together. We also need to strengthen, exactly like the other gentleman was saying, strengthen our economy to make sure the dollar, Canadian dollar is stronger and also diversify. And so we know too. that's part of our investment. Platform. I heard we will take one last question and then we will cut it a bit short to see because my students are getting tired. Yeah. That's okay. Uh, what one of your policies will affect Kitchener Conestoga the most? Good question. Very good question. I would say that too would affect things equally. Um, basically, the, the, the child benefit program that we're talking about right now, the child, the UCCB uh, checks that people are getting right now, that's taxable income, and you have to pay about 40% of that back uh, come tax time. So what the liberals are proposing is a simple tax-free <coughs> child benefit check that's coming in, and we're going to make it income tested, which means that depending on how many children you have, and depending on your income, that determines how much the check is. Because right now, millionaires are getting the same checks that, that hardworking families are getting here, and that's just not fair. So we want to make sure that at a certain income, at $200,000, those families are not getting checks. That way we can give more money to the families that need it. And the Liberal Party is the only party that's saying we're going to stop those checks for the millionaires. As, as a member of Parliament, Federally, I think that any of the policies that um, are going to be put into effect are going to affect all Canadians. So all Canadians benefit, including the uh, citizens of Kitchener and Kitchener-Conestoga. The thing that I 
hear people tell me about is that there is too much poverty in Kitchener and Waterloo. So I think that is one of the areas where uh, Kitchener, Waterloo, and Kitchener, Conestoga can, can be best served by the federal government, is the poverty relief. So having a guaranteed livable income, which would actually apply to all Canadians, rich and poor alike, would bring people out of poverty. That is the best thing that could possibly happen in, uh, in Kitchener, Waterloo. Waterloo region, I think, has uh, an 11% rate of poverty. We're a wealthy country, it shouldn't need to exist here. So having tax revenues from the wealthiest Canadians will pay for these programs, but it benefits the poorest Canadians, the poorest people living in Kitchener, Conestoga. It benefits them the most. Thank you, Bob. Uh, the most beneficial, I hear it on the doorstep, I think the most beneficial uh, piece that we're going to bring forward is $15 a day affordable quality daycare. For parents that have to, their parents are forced to stay at home because they can't afford daycare. It makes no sense if they go and take a job and everything that they earn goes to pay for childcare. I was speaking with one of the parents on the doorstep, that was her choice. She goes out and she works during the day, but in order to put the children in daycare in the morning, it costs $30. And then to put them in the daycare after school while she finishes working, it's another $30. So she's paying $60 a day. We're going to cut that back. A million, a million spaces, $15 a day daycare. Parents won't have to stay at home. They won't have to make that choice. They can go out and they can contribute to the household income and it'll be beneficial. And again, that goes back towards the economy. Oh, the little guy ran away already. It goes back towards the economy and strengthens the Canadian dollar. Can I ask a question? Have you finished? I'll finish. We're happy to take the question. It's just related to what you said. So it's great to provide a million spots, but how is that going to be paid for? I know they're promising one million spots at fifteen dollars a day. How, uh, who gets those spots and how, who's paid for it? It's not a million right away. It's, over the, it's, it's increased over the course of eight years. And it's shown in Quebec that it works. Uh, the program basically starts to support itself. Every dollar invested in $15 a day daycare has a return to the economy, to the government, of up to $2. Anywhere from $1.63 to $2. So the program starts to pay for itself Basically, it's a self-funding program. Initial cost to start up, I, I believe, uh, is somewhere around 200,000 spots is where it's going to start. Uh, it'll be in the GTA area. It'll be in the GTA area. It'll be like a larger number of spaces in the GTA. Uh, you know, in Vancouver, where it's also very, very expensive. Uh, but they need to bring the program in in the areas that need it the most. And eventually, uh, as time goes on, each year they're going to expand and make sure that the program continues to grow across Canada. Is that, is that okay? You'll find that almost all the social programs end up returning more money to the economy, to, to the tax coffers, than it costs to implement them. So uh, the National Pharmacare program is widely counted as costing about a billion dollars to buy these drugs. But the return in the, the reduction of, of um, pressure on the rest of the healthcare system will return that back to about $11 billion uh, in, in benefits and reduced costs of other healthcare, uh, healthcare issues. So almost every single social program that we're talking about that does cost money ends up having a, a greater return back to Canada at large. Your question was about the NDB's plan. I do have to take issue. Um, the idea that Mr. Villeneuve forgot to mention is that half the money would have to come from the provinces. And right now, none of the provinces have signed on and said they would do anything like that. And also, admittedly, he said that it would take about seven or eight years, which means there's not a child that's here or a younger sibling that's here that that would actually help. Um, Canadians don't need help in seven years if the provinces agree. They need help now. They need help now. So what the Liberal plan focusing on is that child family benefit is giving families that need the money now. And it goes by income. So we're going to give the money to the people that need it the most, not these checks to millionaires. So I don't think that the $15 a day care program is, is as it was just described. At this point, it's now 8.10. I'd like to wrap it up. Please, so a bit more time for meeting afterwards.
We'd like to have your final reasons why you should be elected for the Kitchener Constable or riding, and you'll be given two minutes. We need to reference decisions. Does somebody want to go first, or does it matter? Okay, thank you. So, timer, two minutes, please. How much do you want to ready? Well, I want to thank Mr. Harper, and I haven't said that much during the campaign. <laughs> and I want to thank all the students. We've been to a number of these events with, with, the, uh, with, with the students, and I have to say this is, this is the last one because there's an election coming up, but this by far is the most organized, the most thorough, and so maybe just give up, I'll, I'll give you some time. <laughs> Also the parents for their, for their level of engagement, and it's fantastic that, that future generations are learning about civics and learning about uh, responsibility. I, all I want to say is I really appreciate you guys being here and listening. I have been working hard for months and months. I had to earn the nomination by running against a few other candidates. Since February, I've been knocking on doors. I can't believe as long as the selection is that it's coming to an end. Uh, the Liberal Party really wants to help people, wants to help families, want to help it now, not years from now. We want to grow the middle class, grow the economy, have an open and transparent government because right now government is a bit too secretive and we want to include people instead of dividing people. These uh, attack ads that are coming from all sides are just terrible. It's not something we want to teach our kids and the Liberal Party is taking the, the, the position that we will have not, will not be doing any of these attack ads. It should be about debating ideas instead of attacking opponents. So on October 19th, I'm Tim Lewis. Really could use your support. I've been asking for your vote, and I thank you guys for your time. I do want to thank you all for being here. When we come out to the public schools, that's where we get the hardest questions, the questions that, that are, are the most difficult to answer. Because they are the questions that seem to matter the most to real people. Uh, going to a, a place like the uh, Chamber of Commerce, we, uh, we have to ask questions about what's best for business. All thoughtful. Those are uh, reasonably simple questions to ask. But when you ask what is most important to the people of Kitchener and Conestoga, those are difficult questions to, to answer because I haven't been able to talk to all of you yet. And that's where the representation is so important. You need to uh, elect a member of parliament who best represents you. You're not electing a leader, you're not electing uh, Elizabeth May, you're not electing, uh, electing Justin Trudeau or, or Tom O'Hare. You're electing a local representative, one of the five people who should be up here today. So when you make your choice on October the 19th, make sure that you pick the person who best represents you. Don't pick the person with the nicest hair, don't pick the person with the nicest smile. Pick the person who best represents you. I hope that's, a, that's the Green member of Parliament, that would be me, Bob John. But choose the candidate who is the best representative for you locally. Another fine debate winds down. This is our last one, as far as I know, unless I get any surprise calls over the weekend. Again, I'm James Villeneuve, NDP candidate for Kitchener Conestoga. And a lot of people find themselves on the fence. They just want conservatives gone. <laughs> They're tired of it. Uh, the other issue that comes forward is over since the elections started in Canada. Red, blue, red, blue, red, blue. It has always been some kind of scandal that comes forward that creates everybody to sway either blue or red. Now the blue wants to go away because of scandals. Uh, previous to that, there was the uh, Sponsorship scandal that cost the Liberals 12 years that they've been in power. There's an opportunity now for change in Canada. The NDP needs to win 35 more seats to form government. The Liberals need to win 100. We're ready for change. Tom LeCaire is a stand-up guy. He wants to give Canada back to Canadians, and that's what it's about. No more subsidies to corporations, no more subsidies to banks, Take care of the climate, make sure that there's a Canada there for your kids and for your kids' kids. That's what it's about. And before I close, because the children are here, I'm gonna stop, I would like to stop the clock. I just, it's just something for the children, and I always find that it's very, very important for them to take home, and hopefully that this will resonate with you when it's time for you to vote. The reason why we get to vote is because 
Soldiers over the years have fought for our borders to keep us free, to give us that right. You have to make sure when you turn 18 and you can vote, that you take that right that those soldiers provided for you and you take it to the ballot box and you don't vote the way somebody else tells you, you vote in your heart for a, a good government that has your better interest in mind. That's it. We're almost finished. I'd like to call um, just one last order of duty. Two more things actually. Girls come over. We have Raha and Jules come over here, please. Our applause for our Josh from the Mennonite Central Committee, please come forward. So Josh has been very busy these days, and we'd like to present a check to Josh in the amount of, I think we're about $60, but it's not over. There's still lots of goodies. There's a lot of coffee, so we're still collecting goodwill donations. But I'd like the girls to present a check to Josh. And Josh, you have one minute to talk with the MCC. So round of applause for Josh and MCC. Thank you very much, Mr. Harper. Thank you, candidates, for being here this evening. And I want to say thank you very much to this community. Um, gifts like these and, uh, and the attitude that brings them out can absolutely change the world, and I am getting to see it happen every single day. I was on the phone this morning with one of our uh, regional representatives who are working with, ref uh, rather with the refugees in uh, Lebanon. And what she said to me really kind of stuck with me. She said, that what people say to her, you know, the, the things that are purchased with this to, to help save people's lives really do, they do save lives. But what we hear from people all the time is, we don't feel forgotten. People have heard us. People can hear us. We're, we're real to somebody. And that in and of itself can make just all the difference in the world. And I want to thank you um, for myself. I want to thank you on behalf of Mennonite Central Committee, of our partners overseas. And I want to thank you on behalf of the people who will be receiving this care from this community. Thank you. At, uh, that almost draws it to the end. My students have worked on creating ballots. So they have many ballots. They've even color coordinated. And we're going to be using this for data management tomorrow. We're going to analyze uh, our election votes, and there's two boxes over there. Gracie, can you point to the boxes, please? They're beautifully decorated. Can you hold up one box there? Can you hold up the children's box? Is that the children's box? I can't see my eyes. So, children under 17 and under, when you get your ballot, the children have 10 ballots each. Uh, you just fill in one. Please remember, only mark it once with an X. You know, in one spot. Don't spoil your ballot. And they go in the children's ballot. The adults, if you wouldn't mind, please putting your ballot into the adults' uh, ballot box, and we'll analyze that for mathematics, and we'll attempt to let the candidates know how you did at our uh, W.T. Townsend uh, mock election. I'd like to thank all the parents for coming tonight and the members of the community, and uh, I'd like to thank my students for doing such a great job providing um, such a great service for them, and hopefully remember when they're 18 years old, they'll think back to grade four and remember to vote. And I'd like to thank the candidates all of them are very kind people for spending all their time and volunteering their time and coming tonight. And so please have more coffee and please have desserts. And I'm ahead of time. Thank you very much.